Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings in that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of these deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and every one mourn who lives in it, and all of it rise like the Nile, and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation, I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son and the, the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us join in reciting Psalm 52. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor, O worker of deception. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt, O oh, you deceitful tongue. O oh, that God would demolish you utterly, topple you and snatch you from your dwelling, and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble, and they shall laugh at him, saying, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him, all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible whether the thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross, And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone 
in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Author Linda Sunshine once said, if you don't understand how a woman could both love her sister dearly and want to wring her neck at the same time, then you were probably an only child. Yes, sisters have a unique bond, a special relationship. 
They can be the best of friends, encouraging one another when there is trouble with boys, as well as sharing clothes and supporting each other with phone calls and texts that speak right to the heart during the ups and downs and drama of life. It's the positive side of this sibling connection that Sisters' Day aims to celebrate. The first Sunday in August is National Sisters' Day, which aims to recognize and celebrate the special blessings that a sister brings into one's life. Now, before you begin to think that such a celebration is a bit of a stretch, yet another one of those manufactured hallmark moments, think again. Just take five minutes and hit up Pinterest.com, the idea site that's hugely popular with wives, moms, and sisters, and do a quick search for that holiday. And you will find all sorts of memes on the subject of sisterhood and pictures of siblings celebrating their special connection. Clearly, there's something about having and being a sister that needs to be and is already being celebrated. So, mark your calendars. Part of what makes this bond between sisters in particular so unique is that while they have the ability to be best and most intimate of friends, the same sisters can also be the bitterest of sisling rivals. They can push one another's buttons and compete for attention in a way that can lead to lots of eye-rolling, door-slamming, tear-jerking, and not-so-passive-aggressive comparing and competing. Take, for example, Epi Lederer and Pauline Phillips, two of the world's more famous siblings with a sisterly rivalry. While rumored to be at times very close, they engaged in a very public battle for the title of America's favorite advice columnist. Epi and Pauline, or Ann Landers and Dear Abby, as they were known, spent many, many years as estranged, sizzling competitors. But perhaps the most well-known example of the unique relationship of adoration and irritation shared between sisters is found in chapter 10 of Luke's Gospel. Mary and Martha could not be more different. While they obviously loved and cared for one another, at least enough to share a home together, those differences welled up in moments of deep frustration moments where the contrast in their character and personalities took center stage. And while their moment of bickering, so beautifully captured by Luke, may be just one of many for them, it is an important one. Sure, it highlights a relational dynamic we can all relate to, but more importantly, Luke redeems and utilizes their moment of sizzling rivalry to bring to life a simple truth about following Jesus, that each one of us, sister or not, ought to pay attention to. Context is critical in grasping the significance of the rivalry between Mary and Martha. Just before we hear of Martha welcoming Jesus into her and Mary's home, we're told the parable of the Good Samaritan, where Jesus vividly and scandalously illustrates true spirituality, what it means to live in harmony with the values of the kingdom of God. It was Jesus' way of bringing to life in story form one half of the great commandment, what it looks like to love one's neighbor as oneself. But the lesson is not over. In this moment of sizzling rivalry, we see two very different approaches to the first half of that all-important commandment. Mary and Martha are not just two very different sisters. 
They are sisters with two very different takes on what it means to love the Lord your God with all you've got. While the text doesn't tell us that Martha is the older sister, is there any way to really doubt that she is? Worried about every detail, trying desperately to please and overflowing with a sense of authority over Mary, Martha has all the characteristics and then some of a type A firstborn sibling. Not only does she proactively invite the Messiah into her home, but she also then dives headfirst into serving him, making sure everything is perfect and appropriate for him. Such a typical older sister type. She has the idea for a grand party, but then can't even relax enough to enjoy it. Martha. Luke tells us, was distracted with much serving. Such attention to protocol and desire to please is not in and of itself a bad thing. In fact, it can be a very helpful thing. Psychologist Dr. Kevin Lehman, author of the Birth Order book, Why You Are the Way You Are, asserts that this perfectionist bent on life, derived, he surmises, from extra attention from mom and dad, is what accounts for the fact that so many astronauts, presidents, and leaders in general are all firstborns. They tend to strive to meet expectations. Now, for Martha, this was certainly the case. Jesus had come to dinner, and she would not be caught flat-footed rude, or with a hair out of place. Martha's view of the world was very clear. Perhaps you can relate. For her, that which was expected trumped that which was immediate. If a clean house is what is expected of her by others, this trumped whatever else might be immediate for her be it a headache, a hungry stomach, or that deep desire to sit and chat with the man that she'd invited in and find so intriguing. And those who live free from the burden of expectation become a source of deep irritation. Those of us who are wired, be it through birth order or otherwise, to always be doing, perfecting, and meeting obligations can't stand when someone else doesn't seem to live with the same intense sense of responsibility. Mary's approach to life was a complete contrast to the Marthas of the world. While Martha seemed driven by responsibility, Mary was different. For her, that which was immediate trumped that which was expected. More in the moment, Mary knew, at least on this day, the value of pressing pause on the expectations of others and yielding to what was unfolding in front of her. Yes, this would frustrate her sister, leading Martha to plead with Jesus, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But some things, to Mary, were worth stopping for. And this was one of them. Have you ever known someone like Mary? Can you relate to her? Perhaps you have a sibling, probably the middle child, who has no problem at all showing up late to the family party because he or she just had to stop and chat with a friend at the supermarket. Or maybe you're the type who changes plans on a dime, despite having a lot of yourself already invested in the previous itinerary, all because you had the chance to scratch something off your bucket list. 
that was Mary. And sometimes those sisters are irresponsible and underachieving. But sometimes, just like many a Martha become PTA president, the Marys among us buck the system of expectations and strike gold. And such was the case on this day. Mary's approach to life proved to be marching more in line with the priorities of the kingdom of God. Yes, both sisters were simply trying to love their Lord. One tried to love him with all of her activity, her busyness, and her attention to culturally expected details. The other loved him by dropping what was expected and dealing with dwelling with and focusing on the immediate activity and presence of Jesus. Just as the priest failed to love his neighbor, hustling past the Samaritan and onto the temple, Martha failed to love her Lord by inviting him into her home only to stay stuck in the kitchen. In the kingdom of God, what matters most is, well, God. Not our plans and perfectionism, not the approval of others, or the expectations of our culture. When God shows up in his word preached and his body and blood given to us on a Sunday morning, in the unexpected opportunity to serve him by loving the least and the hurting, or the chance to learn from him and rely on him in seasons of struggles and pain. We drop what we're doing, and we attend to him. That's what it means to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that is what Martha's little sister Mary was doing. She was, as Jesus himself said, choosing the better part. Sister or not, sibling or not, we are each day given a similar set of circumstances. As followers of Jesus Christ, we have all, like Martha, invited him into our homes. And we should seek to love him with all we've got. So we must be ready and willing to engage the immediate opportunities, the immediate presence and activity of God. Even if it means ditching for a moment what's expected and demanded by others. It seems unfair and almost wrong to pick sides in this sizzling rivalry. But hey, Jesus did, so why can't we? Martha would have undoubtedly many victories in her own right. But on the, this particular day, it was middle child Mary who scored the victory. That had to burn for Martha. But that's okay. They're sisters. They can hate each other today and hug one another tomorrow. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 8. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use the resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation, especially the people of Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Peace of the Lord be always with you.
Peace, everyone. Welcome to St. Andrews on this, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Good to see you here this morning. Good to have those who are watching at home with us as well. I invite you to fellowship time after the service over in the parish hall. We're in need of coffee hour hosts for over the next month or two, so if you would like to sign up there, the uh, sign-up sheet's over there on the big table in the parish hall. We continue with our outreach for the summer, which is our Operation Smart Start, School Supplies Drive. You can read about that on page 18 of the service leaflet, all the things that we would like to have you donate and uh, put in a backpack and then put on the big table over there in the parish hall. And this all goes to uh, Kimball and Cleveland Elementary Schools. Now we're going to invite up our Christian Ed Director, Alicia Schmidt. She has a word for us about Vacation Bible School, which is going to start in just two weeks. Can we have the microphone on? Can we have the microphone on on the lectern, please? Can you all hear? Oh, that's much better. Okay. <laughs> so um, we are having Vacation Bible School 15 days from today. Two weeks from tomorrow it starts. And there are different ways that you can get involved. Um, the first thing I want to say is if you have a child or grandchild or a niece, nephew, etc., uh, ages four and up who wants to come and serve or just come and participate in some capacity, I would love to have them. Um, there are registration forms in the parish hall. You can also come and see me or reach out to me. My email is here. Feel free to reach out anytime. Um, those of you who are, have already reached out or plan to, we will have our first huddle and construction day next Sunday. Right after services, I'll have lunch provided for everyone who RSVPs. And we just stay and we decorate and have a good time and talk about, you know, how the flow of the week will go and where everyone fits into that. We want you to serve, you know, where you're having the most fun, where you feel like your gifts are utilized best. Um, also, if you have children that want to participate and can maybe only come for half the week or for a couple of days, that's okay. We would love to have them here uh, for any of the days that they can come. And then for our youth helpers, uh, we have VBS every day from 9 a.m. to noon for everyone. And then for youth afterwards, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll have youth activities. So one of those days we're going to play laser tag afterwards. Uh, one of them we're going to have a movie day and a game day afterwards. So a lot of fun. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And it's also a great way to inspire your kids uh, to see that they are the church right now. Not, you know, tomorrow. Not in 10 years. They're the church today. So, uh, you know, I'd encourage you to get with me if you have questions, if you are considering signing your kids up and just want to know more, uh, reach out to me anytime. Thank you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, 
Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.